do come in for help. So if you have a question, just come and raise your hand. I'll be more than happy to assist. Um, so in case, this case, guys, it's the exact same thing. You group the first two terms. Okay. Now we have to remember the second step is factoring so a is equal to 1. You guys can see in this case, a is not equal to 1, is it? No, a is equal to negative 1. So what I have to do now is factor out that negative 1. And you're only going to factor it out of, out of what you grouped. So when I factor out a negative 1, I'm now left with x squared minus 8x minus 20. Does everybody see that? OK, this is a video. I had ones like this on the videos too. Now we just do the exact same thing. b divided by 2 squared. Ah, I didn't get it on me. Cool. So in this case, your b is going to be a negative 8. So I have negative 8 divided by 2 squared. Well, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So therefore, I have a positive 16. Now again, just like we did before, you add the 16 inside the parentheses, and you subtract the 16 outside the parentheses. You see how the process is just the same thing over and over. So I have f of x, oops, that's an equals, equals negative 1 times x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus 20 minus 16. Okay. Now we need to do our x plus b divided by 2 to factor this. So it's x plus b divided by 2 squared. So what was our b divided by 2? Negative 8 divided by 2 was negative 4. So I have f of x equals negative 1 parentheses x minus 4 squared. And I forgot to do one thing. Please note, ladies and gentlemen, when you have 16, I added and subtracted the 16. Does everybody see this? Everybody's looking up here, and everybody sees I added and subtracted the 16. We have to make sure, though, when we factor out a number, remember that number is technically multiplied by all of those terms, right? If you were to apply distributive property, that you're multiplying by negative 1 by both the terms inside the parentheses. Agreed? So if I add a 16 inside the parentheses, that means that 16 is being multiplied by the negative 1. So in reality, I'm not adding 16. I'm adding 16 that's multiplied by negative 1. So all that means is if I'm going to subtract a 16 on the outside, I also have to subtract it, multiply it by negative 1. So therefore, now when I go and simplify this, negative 16 times negative 1 is positive 16. Negative 20 plus 16 is negative 4. All right. So now they're asking you to graph, determine the max, and the min. Oh, and we need to kind of talk a little bit more about domain and range, so we'll talk about that here. So first thing we do, the nice thing about this is it's in vertex form. So we know my vertex is h comma k. Opposite of minus 4 is going to be 4 comma negative 4. So instead of my parent graph having a vertex at 0, 0, I'm now going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is my new vertex. The axis of symmetry, didn't ask it, but you guys should know. Axis symmetry is x equals h, if you guys remember. So that's going to be x equals 4. So whenever I'm graphing, I always like to provide the axis symmetry. Why is the axis symmetry nice? Well, because there's a couple points. One, I want you guys to remember, especially for what we're going to learn today, the vertex always goes through the axis of symmetry, right? And then remember, whatever you graph on the left side of your axis of symmetry, for you guys, you can graph on the right side. Now, the other thing we see here is we have this negative 1. Does anybody remember what the negative 1 does to your graph? Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah? Right, instead of the graph opening up, now the graph is going to open down. So if you guys remember the parent graph, there's no, there's no compression though, right? Compression has to be when it's either greater than or less than 1. So absolute value of it is greater than or less than 1. So there's no compression. So the basically, instead of going, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. Now that's going to be going down. So you go, so from this point, it's going to go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then, as I mentioned, whatever's on the, right si whatever's on the left side of the graph, you can just reflect those points over to the other side. 
using the axis symmetry. All right. So our vertex is at 4, negative 4. Is that point right here, is that a maximum or a minimum point of your graph? Think about the y value. Is that the highest point or the lowest point of the graph? The highest. So therefore, this is a max. Okay. And just for fun, let's determine what the domain and range is. The domain is the set of all x values, meaning all the x, all the x coordinates that make up this graph. So you can see, as this graph is going down, it's going to keep on getting wider and wider. right? Is there any restrictions on how wide this graph is going to go? No, that means every number, every number you can think of can be an x coordinate. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. The range is the set of all y values, meaning all the, num all the y values that could be a y coordinate. So you can see that this graph, how low is the graph going to go? Well, could negative 100 be a y coordinate of over a point on this graph? Yeah, because the graph's going to keep on going lower. Could negative 1,000? What about negative a million? The graph is going to continue going. So it goes as low as negative infinity. But then what is the highest y coordinate that this graph has? Negative 4. And since that's an actual coordinate, we use a bracket instead of a parenthesis. Okay. You guys didn't have to do domain and range for that, but. Hello. <laughs>